In the age of AI, the most valuable skill isn't coding, it's learning how to learn. Imagine your employees becoming AI whisperers, not coders, not programmers, but whisperers, able to speak the language of AI, guide it, and unlock its true potential for your business. Welcome back, my fellow trailblazing entrepreneurs. It's going to be another exciting episode of Small Business Big AI. I'm your host, Kim. Now, if you tuned in last week, you know that today we are continuing our journey about Oprah's TV special called AI and the Future of Us and how it relates to small business success. Now, last week, part one, we talked about how small businesses can prepare for AI integration and the steps entrepreneurs can take to harness the power of this technology. Today, in part two of this three-part series, we're shifting gears to talk about a critical aspect of that preparation, your employees. You see, AI is transforming every industry imaginable. Now, while headlines scream about job losses, the real story is about evolution. It's about new roles, exciting opportunities, and a future where adaptability is the name of the game. Now, just before hitting record today, news broke of port workers striking across the nation. And this isn't just a labor dispute. It's a microcosm of the challenges and opportunities facing businesses in this AI era. Now, these workers are grappling with the impact of automation, a struggle every business, big or small, will face. But here's the key. Small businesses can't afford to get left behind. By investing in upskilling and reskilling now, you're not just surviving the AI revolution, you're leading it. Imagine your team equipped with the latest AI knowledge, driving innovation, boosting efficiency, and outsmarting the competition. This isn't just about big corporations. It's about empowering every small business owner to embrace the future. As Sam Altman, the founder of OpenAI, put it so eloquently on Oprah's recent AI special, and I quote, The most important thing that will happen is that everyone in the world will create at a level that is still hard for us to imagine. This is going to be an enabler of human ability to create, to flourish, to make new things, to create new companies and services like we've never seen. And we want everybody to get to do that, not just the white dudes. As small business owners, upskilling and reskilling has to be felt across the board. The jobs of your employees will evolve. So instead of striking fear and having them look at it as them being replaced, it will be important to have them learn how to work alongside AI and move into more strategic, fulfilling roles. So that's what we're focusing on today. Upskilling and reskilling employees, helping you unlock that incredible potential within your team so that they can thrive in an AI-driven world. And yes, my fellow entrepreneurs, by the end of this episode, you'll feel more prepared and inspired to bring AI into your business. And I'm not talking about your business just surviving. As always, we're aiming for something bigger, something bolder. I'm talking about thriving, building a technology-enabled superpower, taking small steps that lead to big changes. Now, the skills gap isn't new. Businesses have always needed to adapt to changing technology, but AI is accelerating things like never before. It's like we've hit fast forward on the future of work. But here's the good news. This isn't just a challenge. It's an incredible opportunity, an opportunity to empower your employees, boost your bottom line, 
and create a business that's truly future-proof. In order to better explain the concept of upskilling and reskilling your employees, I sought the advice of my Generative AI podcast crew. So let me introduce you to the crew. We have Bob and Jane from Google's Notebook LM. All right, team, gather around. We've got another amazing episode of Small Business Big AI to map out, and this upskilling and reskilling topic is crucial for small businesses. So we need to make it land with our listeners, give them those aha moments, show them the opportunity to thrive with AI. Okay, so this week's deep dive uh, tackles AI and the future of work. Yeah. Which, let's face it, is something that's stirring up some pretty uh, big questions for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I don't think there's a better place to start than by talking about the dock workers strike that's been all over the news. Yeah. I mean, it's causing chaos and supply chains all over the place. And what I find really interesting about it is how this strike with all these dock workers, tens of thousands of them refusing to work. Right. It's the first time in almost 50 years this has happened. And it really highlights that widespread anxiety people have about AI. It's true. And this goes way beyond just wages at this point. Although, yeah, those demands are definitely still a, a major factor. Oh, for sure. But it's like the union's putting its foot down this time. Yeah. They're demanding a complete ban on any automation at the port. Yeah, I see what you mean. And you can just sense the fear, right? It's almost Mm -hmm. palpable. It's like they're staring down these automated cranes, self-driving trucks. They see them as a direct threat. Yeah, absolutely. And to truly get where this fear is coming from, it's helpful to, you know, step back and look at history for a second. Mm -hmm. Because we've seen the same pattern play out time and again, haven't we? Technology advances and then certain jobs, they just vanish. Right. Think back to the Industrial Revolution, even the mechanization of coal mines. Right. Classic examples of how innovation, while crucial, can really disrupt entire industries and livelihoods. It's uncanny how much what's happening now echoes what went down in the 60s. Yeah. You know, back when West Coast ports first started experimenting with automation. Exactly. And back then, you had the longshoremen on the West Coast, and they fought tooth and nail to get those job protections. They wanted guarantees that if automation came in, they wouldn't be out of job. Yeah. And it sounds familiar, right? They got those guarantees. Mm -hmm. But here's the catch. Even with those protections in place, the overall size of the union it still shrunk. Yeah. It shrunk drastically. Because there were just fewer jobs to be had. Exactly. As automation took hold, there simply weren't as many jobs to go around. It's like a ticking time bomb, you know, a slow burn. Yes. The immediate impact might be softened, but those long-term consequences, they just keep rippling out. They do. And we saw something similar happen with the coal industry, too. You had John Lewis, this legendary union leader, spend his life fighting for miners' rights, fought mm. for better pay, better job security, everything. Mm. But even he, with all his efforts, even he couldn't completely stop the changes that automation brought. Conveyor belts, mining machines. Right. These innovations led to fewer and fewer jobs for human workers. Right, just shrinking that workforce down. Yeah, and inevitably, the union itself shrunk along with it. So it makes you wonder, if a total ban on automation wasn't really doable back then, can it actually work in this day and age? Right. Especially with AI developing at such a crazy pace. That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? And it's not just those working on the docks who are asking it. Right. It's people across all sorts of industries. Of course. Because there's this feeling, and it's a valid one, that this time it is different. Mm -hmm. This isn't just about machines doing manual labor anymore. AI, especially with these huge leaks in deep learning, it allows machines to basically learn on their own. It's kind of like that Oprah special a while back, remember? Yeah, yeah. Even Oprah, who's pretty much seen it all. I know. Even she seemed kind of overwhelmed by how fast it's all happening. She had to bring in, like, Bill Gates and other experts just to explain things. Exactly. And this whole deep learning thing, it's a game changer. It really is. Because what it does is it allows machines to look at these massive, massive amounts of data. Right. 
find patterns that we might miss entirely, and then they basically teach themselves new tricks. It's like that experiment Google did a while back, the cat paper thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Essentially, what they did was they let an AI loose on YouTube. They fed it all this data, tons of it. Mm -hmm. Right. And they gave it this basic task. Yeah. Identify cats. That's all. Mm -hmm. And the AI, it actually figured it out. It did. And the crazy part is that even the engineers who designed the whole thing. I know. They couldn't fully explain how it learned to do that. It's incredible. And that's the thing about AI, particularly with this deep learning stuff. It's not just about programmed responses anymore. No. It's about this ability to learn, to adapt. Exactly. Which means its capabilities aren't just improving in a straight line. They're skyrocketing. They really are. Which then leads us to a really big question. Mm -hmm. If AI can already outperform us in some things, what happens when it surpasses us in everything? Right, right. You know, like Mark Zuckerberg, for example, he's talked about envisioning a future where there are more AI agents than there are humans on Earth. Oh, that's a lot to take in. It really makes you think. And it forces us to confront yeah. all those worries that a lot of people have been feeling. Yeah. You know, will my skills even matter anymore? What's work even going to look like in five, ten years? I mean... These are questions everyone's grappling with. Absolutely. And especially when you see headlines like the ones we've been seeing lately. You know, there's that piece in Fortune recently. Right. And it was talking about, on the one hand, you have this incredible optimism about OpenAI's valuation, which is astounding. I know. $157 billion. It's mind-boggling. But then... In stark contrast, you have the very real fear that's fueling this dock workers' strike. Right. It's like we're living in two completely different realities at the same time. It really is a tale of two futures. On the one side, you have the immense potential of AI. It could revolutionize industries, everything from healthcare to education. Mm -hmm. But then there's this other side, this fear that all that progress might actually cost millions of jobs. Right. And leave a lot of people behind. Exactly. And it's not just those blue collar jobs that are feeling the pressure. We're seeing AI edging into white collar professions, too. Absolutely. That AP article you mentioned, the one that talked about how AI could potentially replace screenwriters, even junior lawyers. Yeah. These are jobs that not long ago seemed completely untouchable. Right. But now AI is coming for those, too. And there was that other article in Forbes that was saying that, like, manufacturing could be the next big sector to face a tech revolt, especially if companies don't, you know, make sure they're supporting their employees through all these changes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a valid thing to be concerned about with AI developing so rapidly. It really could impact, well, almost every industry in one way or another. So let's bring this back to, you know, our listeners for a sec. What does all this actually mean for the average person, mm -hmm. someone who might be listening to all of this and feeling a little you know, uneasy about their own job security. Right. Well, Mo Gada, you know, he was the chief business officer at Google X. Mm -hmm. And he made this really interesting point. He said that AI has this massive potential to create trillions of dollars in wealth. Right. But, and it's a big but, there's a real danger that all that wealth, it'll just end up concentrated in the hands of a tiny fraction of people. So it becomes this kind of self-fulfilling prophecy. Exactly. Where like the rich just get richer and everyone else is playing catch up. That's the worry for sure. But here's the good news. It's not all doom and gloom. Okay. There are definitely steps we can take to prepare for this AI driven future. Okay. That's good to hear. Like what and it starts with remembering that even with all this talk about AI, the human element is still incredibly important. Right. Because as advanced as AI gets, there are still going to be things it just can't do, mm. right? Things that are, I don't know, fundamentally human. Exactly. And in the future, it's those people who can work with AI, not against it, who will succeed. They'll know how to use AI to their advantage. But the real key, I think, will be combining those technical skills with the things that make us uniquely human, emotional intelligence, creative problem solving, empathy. Those are the people who will thrive. I like that. And it reminds me of something that AI expert Julia McCoy said. She said, find what makes you happy and what you find meaningful. Work hard. Become an expert in that. Then upskill. Use AI to your advantage whenever you can. I love that. It's so true. Yeah, it's really about being adaptable. Adapting not just to the technology, but to the whole new landscape that AI is going to create. Right. We need to become lifelong learners. We have to always be evolving our skill sets, figuring out which of our skills are transferable and which ones maybe need a bit of an update. And most importantly, we have to figure out how we can specialize in the areas where AI can't compete with us. 
And companies have a responsibility here too, don't they? Thinking about that Forbes article again, the one that stressed how important a people-first approach is when it comes to bringing in these new technologies. Absolutely. Companies need to be more transparent with their employees. They need mm -hmm. to be upfront about what's happening, offer opportunities for training and upskilling. Basically, they need to start acting like their workforce is their most valuable asset, because it is. Yeah. But it can't just be on companies. Governments need to step up, too. When Bill Gates was on Oprah's show, he talked about how vital it is to have ethical guidelines and regulations in place mm -hmm. to make sure the benefits of AI are shared fairly and that we're doing what we can to mitigate the potential risks. So it sounds like it's all about finding that balance, embracing what AI can do, all the good it can bring, but also being aware of the possible downsides and having, you know, safety measures in place to protect people. Exactly. And that's where you, the listener, come in. Because this future we're talking about it's not set in stone. We're at this really crucial point right now. And I think the dock workers strike really highlights that. AI, it's here. It's not science fiction anymore. Right. And it's definitely going to have a huge impact on our world. Right. But ultimately, we get to decide what that impact looks like. And this goes beyond technology. We're talking about values. What do we as a society want to prioritize? What's important to us? Do we just go for efficiency above everything else, even if that means some people get left behind? Mm -hmm. Or do we try to use this technology to do some good in the world, create a future where everyone actually has a shot at success? Big questions. Yeah, they really are. I think they're the ones we all need to be asking ourselves right now. So we've talked about a lot of, you know, anxieties, potential downsides, all of that. But I want to, like, shift gears for a bit. What can we actually do? Yep. How do we make sure that this technology, this AI, that it helps humanity instead of, you know, the other way around? Well, that is the question, isn't it? And, you know, Mo Gada, he put it in such an interesting way. Mm -hmm. He said that, and I'm paraphrasing here, but he basically said that the difference between, like, the worst car in the world and the best car in the world. Okay. It might actually become zero. Wow. Okay. Um I'm not sure I follow. What, what does that even mean, like practically mm -hmm. speaking, especially with AI becoming so central to everything? He's talking about a future, a potential future where AI could create this kind of abundance, this leveling up in terms of, you know, material needs. OK. Think about it. If AI can generate enough resources for everyone to have their basic needs met, mm -hmm. food, shelter, all of it, then what really sets us apart from each other? What truly matters in that kind of world? So it's like he's challenging us to, I don't know, rethink our values. Mm -hmm. If just having things, material possessions, if those become less important, what takes their place? Precisely. And I really do think the answer lies in those qualities that are, well, uniquely human. The things that even the most advanced AI just can't replicate. So like empathy, compassion. Just being able to connect with another person on a human level. All of that. Those are the skills that will be more valuable than ever in that kind of world. Those are the things that will make us irreplaceable. So yeah, it's about nurturing our creativity, our emotional intelligence, our ability to think for ourselves, and really just adapt to whatever comes our way. And maybe, just maybe, rediscovering how important those human connections really are. Especially in a world where AI can... I don't know, at least try to imitate them. I think you're spot on when you think about it. With algorithms and automation becoming so prevalent, it's our ability to form genuine human connections. That's going to be what sets us apart. We have to find ways to use AI as the tool it is, an incredibly powerful tool. Right. But never lose sight of what makes us human in the first place. So as we, you know, kind of stand at the edge of this unknown future, this AI-driven future, with all the uncertainty, all the worry that comes with that, What's the one thing you hope our listeners take away from all of this? Don't be afraid to embrace the possibilities. Stay curious. Keep asking questions. But most importantly, never stop learning. Never stop growing. The future belongs to those who can adapt, to those who can take their own unique skills, their human ingenuity, and combine it with the power of AI to create something truly amazing. That's a great point to end on. And I just want to add, you know, this isn't something that's just happening to us. We're not just bystanders here. Yeah. The future of work, the future of our world, we're all shaping it right now. Each and every one of us has a part to play in making sure it's a future we can all be proud of. Well said. Couldn't agree more. In full disclosure, I used a generative AI tool for the production of this segment. 
the voices of my podcast crew, Bob and Jane, were generated in Notebook LM, an AI-powered research assistant developed by Google. It's designed to help you learn and understand information faster by allowing you to talk to your notes and sources. Now, Bob and Jane did a fantastic job of presenting a sobering, yet exhilarating view of the AI revolution. And their message is clear. We must urgently adapt, educate ourselves, and engage in thoughtful dialogue to harness AI's power for good while mitigating its risk. That is why, as small business owners, upskilling and reskilling is of critical importance. And for those of you who still question the validity of its impact, well, it does matter. The choices we make today will determine whether AI leads us to a utopia of abundance or a dystopia of our own making. According to a study by the World Economic Forum, nearly half of all employees will need some form of reskilling in the next few years. Now, small businesses in particular are often on the front lines of this transformation. So here's the thing, investing in your employees, helping them grow their skill sets, gives your business a competitive advantage. Now, close your eyes and picture this. Okay, if you're on the treadmill or driving, please, please, please do not close your eyes. Picture two barbecue joints in the heart of Texas, Smokin' Joe's and Lone Star Grill. Both boast mouth-watering brisket, secret sauce recipes passed down for generations, and that authentic Texas smokehouse smell that draws folks in from miles around. But there's a hidden ingredient spicing up things at Lone Star Grill. A.I. At Lone Star Grill, the pit master isn't just a master of fire and smoke. He's an AI whisperer. He uses sensors and AI-powered software to monitor the temperature of each smoker, ensuring perfect tenderness in every rack of ribs. The waitresses use tablets to take orders, suggesting personalized side dishes based on customer preferences. And the owner... Well, let's just say he's not sweating over inventory spreadsheets. He's analyzing AI-generated reports, identifying trends, and planning his next great Texas size expansion. <laughs> Meanwhile, over at Smokin' Joe's, the pitmaster still relies on instinct and tradition. Now, he's a legend, no doubt but even legends can't predict a sudden cold front that throws off the smoker's temperature. At Smoke and Joe's, orders are taken with pen and paper, leading to mix-up and frustrated customers. And the owner, bless his heart, is buried under a mountain of receipts trying to figure out if he's even making a profit. Fast forward a year. Lone Star Grill is the talk of the town. They've expanded their menu with AI-generated recipes. Their online ordering system is smoking hot. And they've even launched a line of signature sauces based on customer data. Meanwhile, Smoke and Joe's, despite its legendary brisket, is struggling to keep up. Now, my fellow entrepreneurs, this ain't just a tale of two barbecue joints. In all seriousness, it's a lesson in how upskilling and reskilling can give a Texas-sized boost to any small business. Now, the owners of Lone Star Grill embraced AI, 
training their team to use technology to enhance their skills. And this led to maximize efficiency, innovative ideas, and happy customers with sauce-smeared smiles. <laughs> On the other hand, Smoke and Joe's clinging to tradition missed out on these opportunities. The owners failed to see the value in AI. Their team failed to adapt and their fire sadly started to fizzle. The message is clear, folks. Upskilling and reskilling is not just for tech wizards. It's for every hard-working small business entrepreneur who wants to stay ahead of the game. It's about empowering your team, your workers, your employees to embrace AI, to unlock new levels of efficiency, innovation, and customer satisfaction. It's about ensuring your business not only survives, but thrives in the wild west of the AI revolution. So take my advice, y'all, and get to upscaling. That's it for today's episode of Small Business Big AI. Thanks again for tuning in. I hope you're feeling inspired to start upskilling and reskilling your employees for the AI era. Remember, it's all about taking small steps that lead to big changes. Next week, as we continue our theme around Oprah's Future of Work, viewing it from the angle of small business owners, we'll dive into something just as exciting, the evolving role of human workers in an AI-driven world. We all know that small businesses are the heart and soul of the American dream, and the future belongs to those who are prepared to adapt. Because we're not just building small businesses anymore. In the AI era, entrepreneurs are building big. We're building technology-enabled superpowers. Now, don't forget to subscribe, leave a review, and share this new episode with a fellow entrepreneur who needs a little AI magic in their life. Also, if you've got a story about how you've upskilled your team, I'd love to hear about it. Reach out and maybe your story will inspire a future episode. Until then, keep embracing change, keep innovating, and remember, the future belongs to those who are willing to evolve. AI isn't just for tech giants. It's for you, the small business owner, the dreamer, the entrepreneur who dares to do things differently. The future of your business is bigger than you think. And it starts with the steps you take today. Now I'm Kim, and this has been Small Business Big AI. Thanks for listening. Until next time, keep dreaming big and building smart. I'll catch you in the next episode.